Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my classics for 2023. I can't believe this is the start of many videos planning that I'm going to tell you my plans for 2023. So I have 10 classics that are on this list, plus I have my Dickens project which I've already announced. I've got a series video coming out and I've got my channel video, my channel plans coming out. So there's some ones to get you looking forward to December. Actually, let's see if there's anything else I can tell you about now. So we've got our reader. Oh, and I'm also going to have my TBR jar books. <laughs> a lot of plans for 2023 already. Two of these classics will go into the TBR jar, but I'm not sure which ones yet kind of have an idea but I may keep that as a sneaky peek for you because yeah I haven't 100% decided which ones are going in there. Um, some books I've already planned for set months, not very many of them. I think I've got one book that I'm planning for Victober, one book that I'm thinking about might be good for February but I may just start to change my mind. One book is definitely going on my January TBR and that's because it will match nicely with a readathon. So enough of waffling, let me tell you the books. So I'm going to start off the book which is going in my January TBR and it's going because it matches a prompt for the readathon that we're hosting and that is Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capoto. I've had this for absolutely ages. I thought I would put a short book on my TBR. I will already tell you that there is a prompt that this matches although I'm not actually going to tell you which one. But this, obviously, everyone knows about Breakfast of Tiffany's. It's a legendary film, um, and this is a book that I've had for quite a while. So it's actually going to match a few other prompts. But this is a, the, Meet a True Original, Holly Golightly, a free-spirited, lopsided romantic who owns a fiery red cat as wild as, and restless as she is. With towsled brown ha blonde hair and an upturned nose, dark glasses and chic black dresses, she is top-notch in style and, sen and a sensation wherever she goes. This oh, is sort of, it's set from the mad era of the early 1940s in New York. And this edition also contains three short stories, House of Flowers, a diamond, diamond Guitar and A Christmas Memory. So yeah, this is quite a short book, but it does match my pages. So actually, Tr Breakfast at Tiffany's is actually only 100 pages, which is really short. But it is a classic. It's set, um, Truman Capote was born in New Orleans in 1925 and he wrote his books. So Breakfast at Tiffany's was actually released in 1958. So it's like a modern classic. But it does, I did think I actually really wanted to keep this in the classics because it, to me it's still a classic. So that's that one. That's going to be my January book. And then the rest of them I'm not going to tell you in order. I'm putting Moby Dick on the book on this list because it's one of the classics I need to get to. It isn't a Victorian classic, but it is a well-known classic, but it's had very, very mixed reviews. I don't think it's Victorian, actually. It was first published in Britain in 1851, and it tells the story of Captain Ahab, a deranged whaling captain, and his obsession, obsessive voyage to find the great white whale that ripped off his leg. And it's about, it's got sailor slang in it, biblical prophecy and Shakespearean rant. I do not know too much about this, but I know, like I said, it's had very mixed reviews. It's nearly 600 pages, so it's not a short classic, but it's one that I want to get read. I want to know if I'm going to be one of the team that love it or the team that hate it. So that is my plan. I do not know when in next year I'm going to be reading this. That's next year. Then a children's classic, because I thought, do you know what, this year I actually wanted to include a children's classic and I've got The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, which I believe at some point I can buddy read with the lovely Naomi from Naomi's bookshelf. And that was that is The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and it's by Mark Twain and it's a children's classic. And I thought, yeah, why not? Why not have a children's classic in this? And this is a famous story of a small boy who lives on the banks of the Mississippi River with his friend Huckleberry Finn. He skips school and gets into lots of scrapes. His biggest adventure comes on a panic when he, him, he and his friend Becky go to explore some caves and are lost underground. I think I remember them being a TV show of this when I was a kid and I don't remember what much details but I swear I remember something about it. This isn't long, this is a battered copy, it's like less than 200 pages. It's actually longer than Breakfast of Tiffany's. But it's a children's one 
so I think I'm, at the moment I'm thinking it's February but it because it's short but I may read it for my birthday month in March because it's kids one I don't know yet I'm not gonna set a set date but this is one that intrigues me for that purpose one that is definitely going in the TBR jar because it has been on my shelves for absolutely ages it's one of my TBR vets so it needs to go in the TBR jar and that is Lark Rise to Candleford it's a trilogy this book is the trilogy and it's, it's the story of three closely related Oxfordshire communities a hamlet a nearby village and a small market town the immortal trilogy based on Flora Thompson's experiences during childhood and youth it chronicles May Day celebrations and forgotten children's games the daily lives of farm workers and craftsmen, friends and relations, and all painted with the gaiety and freshness of observation. And this, this copy has Lark Rise, Over to Candleford, and Candleford Green. And it looks nice. I've had it on my TBR vet for ages. Not too long, kind of 500 off pages, but this is going in the TBR jar. So I need to put that one to one side, so I remember that's going in the TBR jar. Now, I thought... I would want to include a um, Hardy and I listened to the lovely Tori from Good Strong Words and she said that she liked the Trumpet Major. It's a World's Classics edition so it doesn't match all some of my others but it is one that she liked and so obviously I'm still trying to get through my Hardy. So Hardy I did the big Hardy sort of tried to read a lot of Hardy last this year but next year obviously I've got the Dickens project but I did want to still include some Hardy. So I don't know when this is going to get read. Um, this is this, the trumpet major. He presents a human qualities of desire and conflicting loyalties, which saw constantly undermining such attempts. The courtship of Anne Garland by her three suitors, the trumpet major, John Loveday, his sailor brother, Bob, and Fert Festus Jerryman of the Yeomi Cavalry takes place against the larger than life backdrop of England's conflict with Napoleon. That mighty little man who was less than human the feelings. Oh yes, yeah, so this is quite interesting. It's sort of set around about the Napoleon War, so that's probably quite interesting. It sounds like quite historically fictiony almost. This is quite a short book actually. It's only three hundred and fifty pages. But Tori likes Hardy, so I thought I would read Hardy. So I'm hoping I like it. Then we've got I'm trying to sort out my copies, that's a battered copy. Then I've got a I'm not sure if this is a modern classic or an older classic. It's Mole Flanders. It's again, it's been on my shelves for ages. It's by Daniel Defoe. I don't know what era this is from. So this is set in 18th century London. And it's the story of a woman born and bred in the murky stews of 18th century London. Defoe creates an immortal heroine and one of the sharpest portraits of how society worked from a woman's point of view. That intrigues me. This excites me. Abandoned at six months old, Mole has no option but to use her considerable wit and looks to make her way in the world. There are no mercy given it to this unadaptable. As a woman, as a woman, her options are limited, and Mole embarks on a rollicking career, career of incest, bigamy, and crime. Five times married, a whore and a thief, her business is survival. I don't want to know any more than that. That's already given me a bit too many hints. Less than four hundred pages but it's one that I really want to get to. This kind of like, it like stands out as like a book with a strong female lead and a classic like that really does excite me. Then we've got another, this is a French classic that again has had very mixed reviews and that's The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. This has had very, very mixed reviews. Um, I think Quasimodo is The Hunchback and I've seen um, like the kids version of it the kids sort of film version of it, they think it's like, and that sort of got me really thinking about it. And Hunchback of Notre Dame, to me, it does bring out about the prejudices against disabilities back then, because he was Hunchback and Quasimodo was. And this is a Gothic book and it's set in the great cathedral of Notre Dame. I would love to go to Notre Dame. I'd love to go to France and everything. I'd love to go to Paris and see all of it. But this is a compelling story of love and betrayal, beautiful deeds and one of the most famous acts of revenge in the world's literature. This again has had very mixed reviews. Some people have loved it and some people haven't. My copy is about 400 pages, but it's this is again one that really excites me and Sweepy's gonna come and say hello. So I'm really looking forward to that one. And then I've got Howard's End by um, Ian Forster. I gave away, I had two copies of this and I've given one to Lovely Gemma 
to an old friend of, to a friend of mine and this is my gorgeous penguins classics edition i love it it's beautiful so i'm hoping i love this i think alice read this last year with a few of her friends and she liked it so this is what excites me right here we go only connect is the idea of the heart of this book a heartbreaking, provocative tale of three families in the beginning of the 20th century. The rich Wilcoxes, the gentle and idealistic Schlegels, and the lower middle class Bass. Sorry, the sweep has decided to pay a visit in this. And the educated, close-minded Wilcoxes. The families are drawn together by love, lies and death. And this is apparently supposed to be his fine, Ian Forster's finest work. And I'm excited by this. It's just, oh my god, it's such a gorgeous copy and this is like not a very long, it's about 300 pages but like I said I know Alice and a few of her friends love this so I'm really looking forward to trying it. Then we've got Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde which is a very very well known book and I did not get on very well with Treasure Island but I'm hoping I like this. It, we all know Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. We all think, oh my God, it's such an amazing book. And we all know that, that it's the state tale of the sort of monster, the side of Dr Jekyll. And it also, to me, ev ev evokes the, the feelings of we all have two sides to us, the evil side and the good side, and how that balances out. And it's a very big thriller in a terrifying study of the duality of men's nature. And it just looks gorgeous. I can't remember who gifted me this, but someone did give me this. And it's a beautiful copy of it, and I love it. I'm really hoping I like it. I'm not sure if this is going to go in the TBR jar or whether I will just read it for a set month because it's a shorter one. It's a nice short classic, less than only just over 200 pages. So that might be quite good. And then, last but not least, a book that is going to be definitely be read in October for Victober, and that is Daniel Deronda. I have my gorgeous Wordsworth Classics edition and the fact that there is no gift note in means in this means I think I found this at a charity shop. So finding this gorgeous copy at a charity shop, Wordsworth Classics edition, which you know are my favourite editions. This is George Elliot. I am not getting on. At the time of recording this, I you would have already known my review of Middlemarch and it's been a bit of a hit and miss. I loved Silas Marner. I am really scared whether I'm going to love this or not because I like Middlemarch was a bit hit and miss. And then George, George Eliot's final novel, because Daniel Deronda is, his final, is George Eliot's final novel. She basically wrote the, it's the entwining lives of the beautiful but spoiled and selfish Gwendolyn Harley and the selfless yet alienated Daniel Deronda as a search for personal and vocational fulfillment in, in a sympathetic relationship. Set largely in the gen, degenerate aristocracy, aristocratic society of the 1860s, Daniel Deronda charts their search for meaningful lives against the background of, of imperialism, the oppression of women and racial and religious prejudice. This does look really good. I hope I get on with it. I really do. So I've got these 10 classics plus the six books. <laughs> Cat's going mad. Plus the um, books that I've obviously got for my lovely Dickens project so that's 16 classics at the very least will get read next year and that's not counting Victoba and we've also got Jane Austen in July so I think definitely two of these are going in the TBR jar because otherwise it's going to kill me and I, that's kind of why I did deliberately pick not too long classics for next year because otherwise I would have killed myself and Daniel Doronda has to be read in October because I'm not determined this year for 2023 not to leave the biggest book till the end of the year because that's what I did this year and it killed me so are there any of these classics that you would like to buddy read with me? Let me know down below. Are there any of these books you think I should have for set months? Let me know down below. Your comments always mean the world to me and I am so grateful for each and every one of you. And also, are there any classics that you've got? Have you got are you guys going to compile a list? Let me know down below. If you've got a booktube channel, let me know if you're going to have a video on it that I can look out for. I would love to watch it. I love classics now. I'm really getting into them. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and not subscribed yet, bring on my ding-a-ling. And I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.